Thank you. The Honourable yeah. Damien O'Connor. Mr Chairman, thank you very much. And, uh, uh, indeed, I, it's a pleasure to follow on from the previous speaker there, um, because I too am going to speak on what is the most important issue facing the primary sector at the moment, Mr Speaker, and it's one word, biosecurity. And the microplasma bovis outbreak that has been identified is a classic case of the government's inadequate management of biosecurity. In fact, inadequate management across the whole of the primary sector. In its classic uh, wisdom, or lack of, it thought that it would throw all response areas of responsibility into one organisation called the Ministry for Primary Industries. And that would be efficient. And that would create cooperation. But what, in, that in, in fact, it has done is dumb down the area of expertise and knowledge and passion that we need, particularly in the areas of biosecurity and food safety. And when this occurred, the restructure, I had people contacting me saying, I've left, I've gone, I've gone from my chosen career in biosecurity because I feel we aren't doing our job properly. And indeed, we've had a recent example of that massive failure. It's a failure in a number of areas. In fact, this afternoon, I was contacted by someone who said, a neighbouring farm of where we have the identified um, infection has not been contacted by the Ministry for Primary Industries. They have been contacted by NAIT, the organisation responsible for animal tracing, but they have not been contacted by the Ministry for Primary Industries to give them advice on a whole range of issues. Because this farmer is bringing stock back from a grazing property back onto their home property, right past the Van Leeuwen's place, and the farmer doesn't know whether that is appropriate, gives further risk for him or, in his or her operation, whether it creates, an ex a, 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 I guess, a complication for the Van Leeuwen's, because MPI has not knocked on the door of the neighbouring farmer and given that advice. Such is the level of failure at MPI, in my view, of their ability to deal with these issues. The Auditor General a number of years ago said that actually they weren't up to um, management of foot and mouth if it came into New Zealand. So there was a review and an upgrade, we were told, of MPI processes. Now when we have uh, mycoplasma bovis in the country, there are a number of questions. Firstly, how did it come in? And MPI very quickly said we may never know, which is an absolute acceptance of failure, and, and I don't accept that for a moment. Can I come back to what we hear now is that there were symptoms of this in March, persistent mastitis, uh, resistance to antibiotics, and some of the classic symptoms of mycoplasma bovis were present, but not identified pursued. Now, I'm not going to make a judgment on whether that was with the pharma or with MPI or the vets or whatever. But to now be in August, the end of July, before we had final admission that we do have this bacteria in the country, it has serious animal welfare implications from a farmer's perspective. In fact, they're more serious than any foot and mouth. The issue with foot and mouth is, it, it, is I guess, it's infectious nature and it can be blown in the wind. This is, does not necessarily, or mycoplasma bovis, can spread beyond direct contact through feed or within a metre, so we are told from international experience. So MPI have been playing this down. I do not wish to play it up, but I do wish MPI to be in a position to manage this adequately. And in my view, there has not been sufficient funding going into biosecurity to meet the increasing trade across the border uh, in and out of New Zealand and the increasing risks from the number of diseases that we know are present around the world. Just at a time we were starting to realise, and even the meat industry, God, that's taken them a while, has started to realise the importance of our biosecurity status, our relatively low level of diseases in this country, <coughs> and the potential that offers for us to, uh, to sell very high value products, free of any contaminants, 
into the world's most discerning markets and, and customers who really want the finest protein in the world. When the meat industry gets it, but the government doesn't, then we're in trouble. And, and Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, the government has to step up here. It's got to put more money into biosecurity. It's got, got to give more independence um, to, to the agency. And that's why Labor has said, indeed, that we will pull biosecurity and food safety out of MPI to give them more authority. I'm supposed to ask for another call or stop. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Oh, the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Sorry, I, I, I just haven't had enough speaking opportunities lately, but that's all right. Yeah. Well, I've been uh, holding you back. Can I just say that, that on biosecurity, the government has not funded enough into this area, has not committed to it, and now we're starting to pay the price. Mr, Mr. Chairman, um, I could take this other call uh, in this area, but I have to say that um, the issue of food safety is one area. And, and we have um, a classic example of, of skewed priorities, I guess, within MPI. When we had people, inspectors, rushing to the Duke of Marlborough Hotel in the Bay of Islands to stop the chef serving a medium rare burger. Absolutely outrageous risk, food safety risk, so we were told, or they were told. Those people would have been better off dealing with real food safety issues and dealing with real biosecurity issues. And, and Mr Chairman, I think you'd agree that, that we've just got to make sure, because there'll, I guess an, there'll be an argument for there's never sufficient funding, we've got to make sure with the funding we have, we get our priorities right. And, and with an MPI under this government, I think they've got them all skewed. Um, I applaud uh, some of the good work that people do on the ground, but but when we've got one big policy department um, forced together to make general policy uh, uh, directives or develop papers um, without the area of or the level of expertise that we've seen in the past, people get despondent. And I think we've lost some of the passion and commitment within MPI um, because of the government's oversight and belief, blind belief that bigger is better and that by throwing all these um, people into one big organisation, the Ministry for Primary Industries, that we're going to get a better deal for the farmers, for New Zealand and for indeed for our customers. We've seen numerous examples in food safety where the ball has been dropped in the past. We hope that we don't have repeats of that for Fonterra or for any other organisation. Uh, we've got pressure now from within the meat industry um, to have self-regulations of, of, of meat inspection. Um, I've had discussions with the industry, they want to engage. But I put to them, ultimately, the, the trust that our customers, international customers, put in government oversight should be absolute. And, and that if we compromise the systems and leave the door open for, I guess, commercial opportunities or human failure, um, then, then we're going to all pay the price. This one outbreak of mycoplasma bovis may yet cost us hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's only small mistakes uh, that can do the same in the area of food safety to our reputation. And in fact, um, our inability um, to, to accurately identify um, um, uh, whether we had a, a major food problem meant that our reputation has been tarnished in the international area, particularly in China. And we are indeed trying to play catch up um, from a food safety uh, mistake. Mr Chairman, I won't go on other than to say that that Labor believes that there's been insufficient funding going into MPI, particularly in the area of biosecurity. We believe we need to up our game in food safety, and we've passed a couple of pieces of legislation to help in that process. But the funding has to follow, um, and, and the government's determination to balance the books, to have its first or indeed maybe second um, surplus budget has come at a huge cost, not only in the areas of social responsibility across New Zealand, but in the areas of biosecurity oversight. And, and practically every day now I'm getting emails from people who are concerned about the process at the border, where there's a casual attitude, um, or indeed through the systems and in, in industry, where um, I think we have a very high standard of outward export oversight, 
but we have an insufficient level of oversight for products coming into the country. Um, officials are too quick uh, to be trusting. They accept that if a foreign country exporting into New Zealand says our systems are all OK, um, then they, they accept that. And I think that's totally naive and puts us at, at risk. Um, that was in the area of Palm Colonel Expel Air, PKE as it's known. Um, the government or its officials denied uh, that there was any possible contamination. And it wasn't until farmers actually showed them with photos that they took action to improve the import health standards. Um, and so we need to ensure there's sufficient funding into MPI to do the proper review of the import health standards. They've indicated that they are starting. We need to make sure that when they do that, they do that properly. Stefan Browning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Speaking to primary industry.